episode goddamn 80. We got a special guest in the building, man. We got producer. We got vice president at AOA Mafia. We got the homie Fuse, man. What's, What's going good? on, What's brother? Dog? How you? I'm good, man. Appreciate you coming on the show, dog. Every time. I was a little worried, man, when um, I told my man it was in the hood. I'm like, dang, he gonna come through? <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm coming, man. I've been to Detroit before, so yeah, 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 yeah for sure. coming back to the D, you know, it's, it's like definitely another dope experience. Wanted oh, yeah. to come back. Oh, yeah, man. I appreciate you coming, man. Y'all was on time, so it's always a plus two, you know, man. For sure. But uh, before we get started, man, we always start off with a salute me while I'm here. Yeah. A lot of times we wait for people to pass away, you know, give them their flowers and stuff instead of, you know, giving it to them while he or she can still mm -hmm. smell them. But it got to be outside your circle. It can't be mom, dad, if you got kids or you got a lady or whatever. It got to be somebody outside of that immediate, you know what I'm saying, in circle. So you got anybody in mind that you can think of? Uh, I want to give them their flowers while they're here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, actually, it's an 808 Mafia member. Mm -hmm. My boy Trey Pounds. Okay. I want to give him his flowers because, you know, um, I used to, when I first got down with the 808 Mafia crew, he, was, he wasn't he was making beats at yeah. all. You yeah. know what I'm saying? He was just a f rapping. He was like a, a Brick Squad artist. Okay, okay. So I was actually making beats for him. Yeah. But I seen, like, from him being inspired, from being around me, Sizzle, and... TM and everybody else that he was just like, Yo, I'm gonna get a computer and I'm gonna make beats. Okay. So to see him literally go from that mm -hmm. to being like multi platinum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean like he did the uh the song with Gucci Man and Bruno Mars. Okay, okay. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? That's, yeah, yeah. yeah. So That's what's up. Yeah, so it was like yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanna give him his flowers, man. He did, you, I saw you put in the work. Mm -hmm. You deserve every all the success you got. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now, now you see I now I gotta ask, cause I was gonna wait to ask this question later on or whatever, but you you brought AOA Mafia. How did that? Do you know like what's the what's the background there? How did it start? I know how did you become a uh, vice president? Was that something you was pushing? Like how how was your start with AOA Mafia and how did AO, A, AO, AOA Mafia start mm -hmm. itself? Uh, oh, so the backstory, you know, I was I was in New York when AOA Mafia yeah, actually yeah. started started. You know what I mean? But you know, just you know, from the knowledge that I was told, you know, um, by the time I came on board, it started between uh, Lex Luger mm -hmm. and Southside, Southside yeah, yeah, and yeah. Um, Walkers, who gave them the name, okay, okay. Mafia, yeah, yeah, for yeah, them for sure. too, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? So, you know, they, Southside and uh, Lex Luger, you know, they collaborated a lot, but okay. then uh, Lex did his solo thing, yeah. and Sizzle, instead of Sizzle just saying, well, I'm going to just be Southside, mm -hmm. he's like, I'm going to be Southside with 808 Mafia. I'm going to start the 808 Mafia crew. Yeah. So then he just started recruiting people. You know, he had TM. TM was first. You okay. know what I mean? He had other members like uh, Perps yeah. and um, those others like Bebop. Okay. And uh, then I came aboard. Me, Tarantino, came around the same time, yeah. 2010, and um, other members that thereafter. Okay, okay. Yeah. Now you being vice president, how did that come about? Like, was the work um, you put in? Like, how did that? So how did that really come about? Was because you know I went to school for business management, okay. and you know I know at the end of the day we're all creatives, sure. and us being a group of creatives, mm -hmm. it was just like who's really thinking business? Yeah. Uh, Southside is a businessman, but he also has business partners. Oh yeah, for outside, sure. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? That run him yeah, and his yeah. business. Yeah, we'll give him But I'm thinking stuff. like, all right. Was how could I bring structure to AOA Mafia? So, mm -hmm. you know, me and him had conversations uh, about how I could help yeah. assist just structural. Okay. You know what I mean? And branding. Yeah. You know, because I'm like, yeah, I'm successful as Fuse. Mm -hmm. And of course, I could just take the Fuse, run with it, and just brand the Fuse and mm -hmm. just put Fuse everywhere. But um, I really, you know, I wouldn't have this career if it wasn't for AOA Mafia. Yeah. So, this is my way of giving back. Sure. And, you know, it, along with the process of recruiting new members and, yeah. you know, just being more of a mentor, the person that, you know, when you can't get to Southside, you okay. can get to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I'm about to say, I know y'all a group and y'all do things, you know, saying by yourself independently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, is there ever, like, competition within the camp? Like, all right, let me the, see what I'm going to do this year. I don't think the competition is like, oh. This he, friendly competition. Yeah, it's not a... It's, <clears throat> It's not about the accomplishments. We mm -hmm. don't have a competition with that. We have competition with just the actual creation itself. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, that beat is crazy. Oh, I'm about to make a crazy beat. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, it's, sure. just, it's just more like that. You know, everybody's success is going to be different yeah. individually. Some is going to be greater than others. You yeah. know, but we all applaud each other. We oh, all yeah. support each other. Sure, One win you. for you is a win for the team. Yeah, yeah, for you know? sure. Because I was, we was off camera, we was talking about the Hot Boys, and they was talking about like, if you listen to those old Hot Boy songs, they were saying the person who went on first usually had the best verse. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it was always competition, right. but it was like, all right, I'm going to come here and I'm going to whoop your ass today in the studio. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? But yeah. it, it was friendly competition to make everybody better because you know once you come in the studio, you got to give your best 16. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's the same thing when we sit down and make beats with each other. Like, if we collaborate, you know, 
it might be where I started, then Trey Pounds would add something, then D.Y. would add something. It's yeah. like, we all know that, damn, by the time I sit down and add something, I have to contribute something yeah. fire yeah, to yeah, this yeah. beat. You know what I'm saying? Now, let me ask you, because we usually start, we're going to go see your uh, growing up, but let me ask you this. When you say contribute, help each other out and stuff like that, how do you feel like if an artist, you know what I'm saying, take that same that same uh, approach and that same concept, if he in the studio and he, and he got some bars or something, but you think, hey, this might go with this, you think that's okay, but a lot or a lot of rappers like is opposed to that because it's gonna make it seem like, oh, all right, I have some help. You know, what I'm saying the whole ghostwriter thing, everybody hate that. You know, what I'm saying if you're a true I don't, MC. I'm I so I'm from New York, so okay. of course you know New Yorkers, especially uh, during my upbringing, yeah. they were real adamant about you know writing their own stuff. Yeah you know expressing their creation the way that they do it being original and being able to say oh you're biting me yeah, you know yeah, what i'm yeah, saying sure. but now that i'm in the industry mm -hmm. i see that in many forms whether it's just producing songwriting or being the artist you yeah. know it's just like it, everything is, is a collaboration you oh, know yeah, what i mean yeah, like yeah. you can never just do it all by yourself no. even if it's like you being the artist and you have business partners who help you succeed as an artist, that's a collaboration right there. Oh, yeah, true, true, you know true. what I mean? So I just look at it like collaboration is everything. So for people who like are opposed to ghostwriting, that's cool mm -hmm. to each his own, but I, I'm not. Yeah. I feel like if, if you feel like somebody could bring something to the table better than you mm -hmm. and it's for the greater cause, yeah. why not use it? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people, too, you got too much pride. Like, they don't want that help. Even though it might be some fire, man, I don't want that shit. Get I, out. I mean, you know what I'm in, in this industry, <laughs> I mean, there was something I was taught. I don't know how many people were taught the same thing or if they even care, but mm -hmm. I was just taught pride and ego is, the, is like the two quickest things to kill your career. Oh, man, for sure. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. I came in there and I knew I had to put that to the side. Yeah. So I, when I walk in the room, pride and ego to the side. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not greater than you. You're not greater than me. We all equal. Oh, yeah, you know for sure. I mean? you know, like you said, at the end of the day, as long as the team eating, Shit, it shouldn't really The pride should be to Hey You shouldn't even have it Like we all eating We all good We have a pride amongst us As a group yeah, To be able to together. say We're 808 Mafia yeah, yeah, You know yeah, what yeah. I mean that We're pioneers And we've done so much For this mm. industry mm. Yeah there's pride behind that yeah. But the ego behind that You know I don't carry that You oh, know yeah, what I'm saying sure, Like yeah. I'm around other producers And you know, I just, I'm just as humble, yeah. you know? Yeah. Now, see, man, damn, it's, it's crazy we start like this because we never start like this and go straight into it. But, like, mm -hmm. you see, you know, as a, a lot of artists, and I'm quite sure you you haven't seen it firsthand. What What is your belief as far as, like, why do people, they, they want people to break up? Like, if I come in, this is, you my manager, mm -hmm. you brought me into this shit, we in here together. But as soon as a dollar bill come into the picture, mm -hmm. things get to start acting funny. Is it because we might not have those conversations beforehand or I might not never see this my, uh, my money or... I might want to go to this person because he got a bigger name. Like, why do you think crews or like individuals break up from each other when the money start coming in? You seen the movie Scarface? Yeah. <laughs> Lesson number one. Yeah. Never underestimate the other guy's greed. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. That, that's lesson number one. Yep, yep. There was no other lesson before that, right? Yeah, no. That, that was the first thing he's told them. Yeah. Never underestimate the other guy's greed. Yeah. And that's the truth. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you do business, you have to understand there's always going to be somebody who's going to want more. Yeah. You yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. So that's, at the end of the day, what it is. And mm -hmm. you got to look at it like this from this standpoint. There's so many perspectives. Mm -hmm. So say, for instance, <clears throat> you're a manager. Okay. And you have an uh, artist, okay. right? Or let's just say a producer. Produce, uh, reason why I say producer, because producers get placements opposed to artists who just seek record deals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's just say you're a, a manager and a producer, right? Mm -hmm. Y'all come in the game together. Mm -hmm. Say, for instance, if you're a manager who brings XYZ to the table yeah. and that changes the producer's career, mm -hmm. right? Now, there's two things about that. Now, yes, you change, you help bring something to the table that was substantial for him yeah. and you, uh -huh. and, but it changes his career, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, therefore, you will see, you will feel like, yo, I need to continue building with this guy. Yeah. I started you, so yeah, yeah, continue. Yeah. So, yes, if you're a grateful person mm -hmm. and you believe that you, us keep us working together is going to bring more, then yeah, you're going to yeah. keep that same relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then it comes down to percentages, right? So let's just say at the normal rate of a manager is 20%, right? Yeah, yeah. So you got to think if a person who's never really had money like that, yeah. which is 90% yeah, yeah, of the for, population, yeah, yeah, sure, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. uh, then they come across a situation where money is now on the table. Money yeah. that numbers they never seen never before. Never seen ever, yeah. Now, this is where greed comes in. You got a house phone, man. It's okay. Nah, <laughs> yeah. nah it's cool. Yeah, yeah, throw back. Uh, yeah. It's like, uh, 
that's where greed comes in. Yeah. So because now a person might look at it like, damn, I I just made ten grand, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But now he's like, damn, I have to give up give, two grand. Yeah, this. So yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Damn, I'm down, I'm down to eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. ten look good yeah, though. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I know. So you mean to tell me every time I do this, I get a ten? Mm. Yeah. I might have to fire this nigga. You know yeah, what I'm saying? yeah, for sure. Yeah, so that's yeah. what I'm saying. That's where the greed would come Man. in because now that person's so focused on the money, money yeah, and forgot. thinking about getting these tens, but he's forgetting the fact that you helped bring yeah, that ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's how some people cut off their own air supply. Yeah, man. Like I said, man, it's terrible because you see it. You see that shit so much, man. Like, damn, he started with this person. Yeah. Took a couple years into the game. It's a whole different person. That mm -hmm. go from sports. Like, you, you see people with ages who came into the game their rookie year. I mean, for some reason, sometimes it's, it's needed. Mm -hmm. but, but you see a lot of times, you know what I'm saying, that separation become effective once that, that money come in. Like you said, that 10, mm -hmm. I got to get you get you this. Mm -hmm. Damn, I can get, get more money if I get rid of your ass. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? But like you said, you ain't really seeing, like, oh, if it was for him, you wouldn't be in the situation. Instead of looking at it like, I just got an 8. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn, working with him, he might bring me ten more. Eights. Yeah, and you can say greed. Cause you know what I'm saying? Because you still ain't seen the eight, so exactly. you should be happy with that. You never seen the eight, <laughs> yeah. so that's it's, it's crazy. So now let's just look at it from an artist perspective. You come in as a group, right? Yeah. Let's just say you're a rapper and you come in as a group. Of course, in mo in majority groups, there's always that one who yeah, stands yeah. out, right? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. usually the star of the group. Yeah, yeah. So usually, why groups break up is because of money as well. Yeah. If you're the star and everybody, once you're in the industry, you're now you're in a whole different world mm -hmm. where there's gonna be different people in your ear. Yeah. So sure. if everybody's in your ear talking about yo, you're the star, you're yeah. the star, yeah, you're the star, yeah, you're, the star. Yeah, you're the star. You're the one. Feed your ego, like. <laughs> now that's what I say, yeah. ego. So now ego is in the, in the into play. So now he's like. Shit, I might as well just go do this solo thing yeah. for a minute. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So yeah. now the other, now the rest of the group is like, damn, yeah. you cutting off their air supply because they're not, yeah. they're, they're actually living off of your stardom. Exactly, exactly. But it's, if you're a team player, you want that. Yeah. If anything, you want to help build them because mm -hmm. you're the star. Yeah, yeah. Because you see those R&B groups. Yeah. You got that person who just, you know, what I'm saying like the boys' man. You got the man with the deep voice, like mm -hmm. you know, what I'm saying and he could, you know, and you can see it. But that that with R&B groups, what group that you? Besides Boys to Men, is it a group that never really broke up and somebody did a solo thing? Mm. It's hard to like think, right? Maybe a Jagged Edge. That stayed together? Yeah, stayed together oh, throughout yeah, yeah. their whole Jagged career. Edge. Jagged Edge and probably Boys to Men. Boys to Men, it's yeah. probably the only two, because everybody else always had that, you know what I'm saying, they had Marion, they had Ralph Transvet, Bobby Brown, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Like right. Slim from 112. <laughs> you know what <laughs> even, <laughs> even Casey and JoJo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure, like, it's always it's always that that, that main person. You already know, like, yeah, they, they good for these two years together, yeah. but... You already know. After yeah. a while, he tired hearing that background vocals. And stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I could do that background vocals myself. <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty much. So yeah. it, gets, it gets crazy when it's like money. It just yeah. changes. Everything. And you know what? We because we was talking about that off camera too. The battle. That's what they were saying as far as like the difference between Dipset and the Locks. The Locks never broke up. Yeah, they never did. They always did. Even though they was individuals, they were still rooting each other on. They were still mm -hmm. together. Yeah. Dipset had times where the beef was public between Jim Jones and Cam. Yeah. And Santana and Cam. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's the that's. That's probably the worst thing in this industry, like just sitting back watching. Yeah. It's like when personal business becomes public business. Oh, for sure, yeah. It, it shouldn't never. Yeah. What man. goes on behind closed doors should stay there. That's what life, too. That's relationships. You see motherfuckers yeah. on Facebook. Literally, Come like, on, man. like, like <laughs> telling everything. Yeah. Right? As soon as everybody else get their little they, they, their viewpoint in, mm -hmm. it messes up everything. That's why I don't like when people call me about their relationships. Mm -hmm. Because, like, don't call me talking <laughs> about, yo, man, I hate this bitch. Da -da -da -da, man, I just want to leave this bitch. Then you turn around and you're back with yeah, her. Yeah, you're back with her. Like so, so it's yeah. like all of that venting was for what? <laughs> hey, we've been through that. Like we like that's like when you 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 know you you in a relationship with a young lady, you tell the family about them, mm -hmm. and then y'all back together. Not family hate Keisha exactly because of you. But you love Keisha, you want them to love them, but you ain't put all this. Which is what girls do. <laughs> yeah. Girls would like a lot of girls. They, man, they will bash you <laughs> to their friends. They will bash you to their family yep, members. Yep. But I love him <laughs> yeah, and still exactly. be with you. Man. But now everybody's looking at you crazy when you come around yeah, because yeah. they're like, she done told us this. Yeah. Ex, you know what I mean? So how much money you and made? You and hit him upside the head? Like, <laughs> <laughs> anything? They yeah. Just, yeah. So yeah, you gotta keep you got you, you gotta keep that junk in the circle. You gotta keep always, it between y'all with everything always. with life, with business, with whatever. Always. Yeah, man. But shit, yeah, that was that was cool, man. We didn't go right into it, but we always, you know, what I'm saying I always like to see how it was for artists or. 
or anybody how it was growing up. So yeah. tell me how it was as a young fuse. You already said you're from New York. Yeah. Like who was in the crib? Mom, dad, brothers yeah. and sisters. Like how was it? Yeah, it was me. Uh, so growing up in the Bronx, it was just me, my both my parents okay. and my older sister. So uh, my sister, she went to college. Mm -hmm. So it just became a point where it was just me. Yeah. And I mean, so that's why I got the only child syndrome stuff. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah for sure. But uh, yeah, that's it really. You know what yeah. I mean? Like. Um, grow up I was in the streets okay. you know what I mean definitely like always in the streets um play sports yeah what, I was, always, you, what was you doing hooping football my what? first sport was baseball okay baseball Come, I mean both my parents are Hispanic okay okay so they always used to watch baseball so mm -hmm. look, that's all I would you know what I mean no yeah, 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 yeah. basketball is my favorite sport which was the most successful sport for me and that came later okay in life um through a cousin of yeah. mine, I used to stay with him during the summer, and uh, I like I, I'll be honest with you, I, I knew nothing about Magic Johnson's Larry Birds, yeah, 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 Kareem yeah. Abdul Jabbar's, none of this. Yeah, I knew nothing about yeah, it. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. My first basketball player was Michael Jordan. For sure, yep. You yep. know what I'm saying? Like I had his sneakers, never seen him play, didn't know why. I didn't yeah. know my mother bought me his sneakers. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. But when I saw him play, I was like, damn, he's dope. Yeah. So. That's what made me just like was that, uh, was that like an early passion of yours before the music? Like, was that something that you looked into as maybe this was the career choice I wanted to chase as far as being, you know, a hooper or a baseball player? Yeah, I wanted to just do basketball. Once I picked up basketball, that's all I did. Yeah. Uh, I had a scholarship for basketball to Globe College in Manhattan. Oh, so you was nice for real then? I mean, yeah. <laughs> I did my thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, it got to a point where I wanted to... Uh, had opportunities to play overseas and try out for the NBA, and for sure. I didn't do it. I chose to just take the music path, yeah, because I felt like it was less discipline, yeah, to be honest with you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I hate sure. discipline, yeah. yeah. <laughs> discipline is a part of life, but I, yeah. you know, I just know it came with certain sacrifices mm -hmm. that I just wasn't ready to make. Oh, yeah, and for I just sure. know, That's like, music is just way more laid back, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean, you just free. That's true. This one, yeah, come on, my brother was a. Cole Hooper, Cole Hooper, but he hate he hated when a coach told him anything as far as like yeah. critiquing his game, what he should do, this yeah. and the third, like same here. <laughs> yeah, what position you play? I was the point guard. Oh yeah, so I got recruited too. to be the point guard. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to be the shooting guard, okay. but they already had like two shooting guards, which was they were exceptional shooters. You yeah. know what I mean? But I was just yeah. the point guard, so I you know I, I played my position. But what it hurt me my first year is you know as you, if you're a point guard, you gotta know all the plays. For sure. I had a problem of breaking plays. Yeah, you just go ahead and get but, that easy bucket. But that, <laughs> but that stemmed from my football days because yeah. when I played football, I used to play for um, you know a little league of football and. Mm -hmm. I, I was a quarterback. Okay. So me being a quarterback, I will always break plays. Yeah. I wouldn't yeah. stick to the plays. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, so yeah. it'll just be like. And so throughout your career, Pav, you always been like kind of like the demand, like point guard, you running quarterback, things, quarterback, yeah. producing. You really you putting everything. You know, I saying, still to play. do that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you you still doing that? You know, through through three different things. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Literally. I never looked at it like that. But yeah. <laughs> you know, showers, anybody. You know, you get those. <laughs> <laughs> I like the leader position. Yeah, for sure. I like to sure. lead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, now, um, you know, a lot of times we get our musical influences from the crib, yeah. from our mom and from our dad. Usually, our favorite artists come from them. Yeah, absolutely. So when you have your own ear for music, but you was loving what what mom was playing when she was cooking or Anita dad Baker, playing. Prince, yeah. Michael Jackson, Marvin Gaye. I mean, Classic. like literally every kind of classic you could think of. Uh -huh. My parents' record collection was exceptional. Yeah, you know what I mean, like literally, yeah. like. For sure every day they playing some kind of jam and yeah. that you know you know as a kid i don't know the name of these artists yeah, unless know, i music. you know I, mean? I just knew it was good music yeah i was just like man yeah. luther vandro oh, that's yeah. my mother's favorite mm -hmm. like i used to be like man he's fire yeah i remember my mom you know anita baker always top choice. always and you yeah. know when anita baker playing you about to have a fire ass breakfast yes <laughs> like, <laughs> oh yeah facts and my dad like his i think his favorite was sade oh shit, sade. he always be hating on sade man for real wow. suicide music suicide music <laughs> 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 For real? No. Her music like, is beautiful. Yeah, I love her and her music mm -hmm. like <laughs> both of them is beautiful though <laughs> very very yeah. still beautiful to this day oh yeah for sure <laughs> <laughs> so uh who was it what your what your dad said hip-hop back then no my parents they don't even understand hip-hop still yeah. to this day they don't what is this shit <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but you know uh my sister yeah she was the one she yeah. like she everything hip-hop 
mm-hmm. related, everything dance. Cause you know, it was like techno dance yeah. and R and B. Like mm-hmm. literally, I think all my music influence probably came from her. Cause she she was into dancing, so yeah. she, she would listen to everything. Okay, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Now you know, what I'm saying we were you were talking about like you know, what I'm saying we talking about music and stuff like that. But I was just telling him before you guys had came, like how it was, how exciting it was to get a new album and breaking the package off yeah, and yeah. reading the credits. Like how exciting was is it then compared to now? Like are you as excited for a new album to drop now? Compared to back then, because like back then you could actually like get the physical hard copy, open it up, might use it for a poster, read the credits. Like you can do that on your phone, but it's it's a different type of feeling. It's yeah, it's not the same. Yeah. Of course, back then is is you know you open in a package. It yeah. was like a you know an experience. Yeah, for sure. You get to open up the the insert. And, you know the insert be wild yeah, crazy, yeah, yeah. so you might fuck around. There'd be like an order form at the end of one, yeah, yeah, get some yeah. merch. Yep, yep, you know yep, what I mean? Yep, like yep. surprise you or whatever. You know what I mean? Like you might get a sticker inside. Anything. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? So I used to just. I mean, it was just an experience. Now you already know everything's streaming. Yeah, so yep. which one stood out? Because to me, a album, a couple albums that stood out as far as like just the packaging and the, and the cover art yeah. was Janet Jackson. Just because I was young and a pervert mm-hmm. when she had her titties getting covered up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and, uh, and no limit and. Cash Money albums because mm-hmm. it was like it was. I think Master P probably started that whole the cover looking like just dope as hell. Yeah, like you got the bling, you got the ladies, you got this, that, and the third. Like, I wouldn't even say though, more so those. I would say I would go back to my dad's record collection. Mm-hmm. There were some albums, like I don't remember the names, but they had some crazy covers. Yeah, like, yeah, Shorty's was like topless. Yep, yep, yep. You know what I mean? I remember like, the Ice T joint. Yeah, I mean, there with, was a lot of yeah. joints. I was just like, yo, girls was provocative back <laughs> then. Like, they just sure. had it out like this on the cover. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But, yeah, yeah, my dad used to have some record covers. I'd be like, man, this is like soft <laughs> porn. <laughs> but no, for <laughs> sure, for sure, man. Now, um, we all ask this question a lot, man. We started this back at the crib and we had like game nights or we just chilling. Yeah. We, we um Give me a song or an album that every time you hear it, it just take you back to a certain point in your life, a certain time. Like it might have been the first time you might have, you know, what I'm saying, kiss the chick. This song was playing, or when you, you know, what I'm saying, anything. What's a song that just st- st- stands out? Like it could be an album or a song. Um, it, I would say Souls of Mischief, ninety three okay. till infinity. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just I don't know I think that was like the first rap song that I, when I was cause I used to always watch a show called Video Music Box uh-huh. like they're back in New York yeah that's a, a like a popular video show okay. where they play rap videos and that was like the first video that I saw where I was just like captivated you yeah. know it's a crew yeah. I know they weren't from New York they were like from Cali I don't know from the West Coast somewhere yeah and they were just dope yeah, and yeah, the yeah. beat was just so fire and yeah. I was just like I, I really like this. See, everybody's so. first memory of rap is, like, so much better than mine. Mm. My first memory was, like, as far as something that, like, gravitated and just got me was uh, Sir Miss Like Baby Got Back. Okay. That's, <laughs> just a, that's a dope song, too. Yeah, because I'm like, what? Oh, his ass? I'm like, I'm, like, five or six years old. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but if you look at that video, compared to the ass now, it's totally different asses. Yes, absolutely. Like, if you can tell those natural asses, like. I mean, they just, like, a girl had an ass out. <laughs> yeah. it was, they just cool with it. Yeah, you know yeah. Saying? Now you got the WAP song, everybody protesting against mm-hmm. it. But Sir Miss Lock was showing ass the whole video. I mean, Luke. Luke, oh, man, yeah, for Two real. Two live crew. Yeah, yeah. He put the whole parental thing down. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? People was trying to ban his music and yeah. stuff like that. So it was just like sometimes with that, I don't know because when we get older, we become our parents and look back at things like those was the good times. Mm-hmm. But like looking at videos and opening up music CDs and stuff like that, it was like a different feeling than it is now. Yeah, it, I mean, like I said, it was just an experience. You know what I'm saying? Like when you actually, because you don't know what to expect. Mm-hmm. And then also, you're eager to know the credits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Sure. Like, who, who produced this? this yeah. You know what I mean? Then, especially if, like, I used to have, like, favorite producers that mm-hmm. I would want to hear a beat from, and yeah. I'd be like, oh, he produced on here. You know, yeah. I'd go straight to that song so yeah. I could hear the yeah, beat. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. you know, it was just different. Sticking on that, man, like, growing up, man, you know what I'm saying? Who was, who was three, um, three, uh, 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 producers that you looked at, like, as far as, like, these are my three guys? Three guys. Um, Havoc from Mob Deep. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah I yeah, love yeah. Havoc. Reza from Wu-Tang. Oh, yeah, for sure, yeah. Because I loved everything Wu-Tang yeah. was doing at the time. Um, and I would say um, Jay Dilla. Jay Dilla, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. That's a good yeah. three. That's a good three, yeah. Manny was my... Because my introduction to rap, because like you said, your parents didn't play rap music. My mom and dad didn't play rap music. Mm-hmm. So once I became a real rap head, for real, it was like 13, 14, so it was a whole cash money era. Mm-hmm. So Manny Fresh just became my... Favorite producer, like yeah, Manny's dope. Manny was fire. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, of course, as time progressed, 
there was other producers I started gravitating towards. Like, you want to, if I listen to an album, I would want to hear Kanye West beat. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or yeah. Just Blaze beat. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? For sure. Like, uh, Timbaland yeah. and Pharrell. Like, yeah, there was yeah, just yeah. so many that you just look yeah. forward to hearing. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. Like I said, man, I miss them days, man. Bring bring her. Hey, I was in the mall and I walked past the CD store and I went crazy. Yeah. I had to go in there and then I thought about it. Like, damn, what am I going to play the CD on? Yeah. <laughs> like, nah, you know what like, I'm it's crazy. I have a car. I just got like a while ago, like like a year and a half ago, I bought an Audi and it still had a CD player. Oh damn! And I was like, I actually excited about yeah, it. Yeah, man. So <laughs> the funny thing about it was, I actually had like CDs at yeah. my like every time I go back to New York. Yeah. My mother, she still like, whatever I had left there, still, still there. So yeah. I have like the hugest CD collection. Yeah, man. So every time I go there, I always find myself stealing one yeah. of my own CDs. Yeah. Like, man, well, that's bring classic. This back. That's when in the car, you going through the yeah. The, the book, it just feels. <laughs> Like just I don't know, it's real nostalgic. Oh yeah, man, yeah, it was a good times, man. So you know, we talked about the uh, the artists you was listening to based off your parents, yeah. but once you got your own ear for music, like who was those those artists that you was messing with? And, uh, like, my, the first rapper that uh, I invested in, well, not even I, that I wanted to actually indulge to hear an album was Redman. Okay, oh yeah, and his yeah, first yeah, album yeah. was called What the Album. Yeah, yeah, yeah Redman and Fire. I just remember my sister bought the album for me. Yeah. And I never got to hear the album because my for some I don't even know how. I think my mother said, Let me see that and yeah. she like looked at the the names of the songs yeah. and there was like a song called <laughs> How to Roll a Blunt. Yeah. And yeah. my mother was like, Oh nah. No, I can't hear this. Yeah, he's yeah. not hearing it. He's not listening to this. <laughs> and she gave it back. So it took me a while until um I you know, I, there was like a uh, I guess I don't tape store. They still yeah. sold tapes around yeah, yeah, that time, yeah, yeah. like, and they had CDs too. But I just remember, like, I was walked in there. I had a little chump change in my pocket, yeah. and I went to go rebuy the Redman album. Okay, but I didn't buy it because I saw that there was a Wu Tang uh, yeah. song, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I bought that instead, yeah, yeah, which yeah. was uh, Protect Your Neck. Okay, okay, yeah, uh, and yeah, I yeah. was just addicted from that point was, on. Was that your first? Um, that's the first. Uh, that's the first music purchase I ever made. Ever, ever, man. That was, why is it cool? My mind was terrible. Mine was um. <laughs> do you remember the response to No Scrubs, Sporty Thieves? Yeah, yeah, I remember no that. Pigeons. Yeah, No Pigeons. <laughs> but that shit was fire. No, too. Yeah. I used to love that song. <laughs> I bought that because you had the single. Remember you could buy it, it had a clean. Yeah. The uh, curse verse and the instrumental. Yeah. <laughs> That's how singles used to come. Yep. My mom went to uh, what's that? Fye? Was that whatever that, that place is? And yeah, I had to bring her because I wasn't sixteen. Mm. So she had to, that was the first. That was my first purchase, man. No, nah, that was. The joint back then. <laughs> Nigga had we to be used to always be in high school loving that shit. Like yeah. the sporty thieves. What? <laughs> yeah. See, people don't be know about sporty things, man. No pigeons, man. What? That was that <laughs> shit back then. Hell yeah, goddamn man. So with you, man, like as far as music, man, when you know you said you hooped and stuff like that, whatever mm -hmm. it had, you know you played ball uh, heavy. When did music become a part of your life? Was it a rapper or was it always producing or was it a little bit of both? It was rapping. Oh uh, yeah, I, I aspired to be a rapper. And um, I, I did good as a rapper, like, you know, I, yeah. I, I was talented at it, but okay. I just fell in love with uh, producing because I just felt like it came with less hassle, mm -hmm. you know, with rapping. There's so many politics with that, yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? And it's really, like, you really got to know for sure somebody, yeah. you know what I'm saying? As, as to producing, how my career started, my beat just randomly ended up in somebody's hand that was able to change my life. And that's mm -hmm. usually how it could happen for oh, a yeah. producer, yeah. opposed to being a rapper, unless somebody just randomly hears your song. Yeah. But, I mean, rap was cool, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, I still, you know, like to rap in my yeah. head. Did you still go by the name Fuse? Yeah, of course. Okay, okay. Yeah, I had Fuse, I had that name since like literally. always? Like, cause always. some people had like terrible first names. I mean, I'm be honest with you, my, <laughs> this, this is going to sound sad, but my first name literally was Spicy Chicken. Sp <laughs> oh, you got to give me the back, the background on how you got that name, man. It's from football. Okay. Because, you know, all right, so my favorite football players are quarterbacks who run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Who always break the play. Yeah, 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 Mike yeah. Vicks, you know, yep. people like that. So I was doing that as a kid before I even know, <laughs> knew people were doing that yeah. before it was like a thing. Yeah. And I used to just always do that, break the plays and just run. Yeah. And But I used to just, <laughs> it was just stupid because I wouldn't run actually with the intent of Scoring. trying to get to the touchdown. I would run just trying to break people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I see somebody, oh, I broke him. <laughs> somebody else, oh, I'm going to break him. And it would just be that. So they used to be like, oh, that boy spicy chicken. <laughs> so it just stuck with me. And I was just like, man, that shit corny, man. 
<laughs> Y'all niggas ain't gonna keep calling no. me spicy chicken. <laughs> <laughs> like, did you, did you, like, all right, this is gonna be my rap name? Or, like, did they put that, like, hey, just call me Nah, it wasn't even rap. It was like, I was just a sports head. Yeah. You know what I mean? They was calling me spicy chicken. That was before rap. Damn, yeah. spicy chicken. I, I don't, we gotta reintroduce that name to somebody, man. You gotta... <laughs> nah, that's just buried. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I get haunted every time I see that name on a menu somewhere. Like, I see spicy chicken. I'm like, shit. <laughs> Take you right back to them, them breakdowns, man. This shit's God horrible. Goddamn, man. So, um, so you said you uh you did rap for a little bit, then you gravitated towards the producing because it was yeah. a little better for you. Mm -hmm. Now, who are some people like on your come up and your journey, man? Who was like hands on helping you out, giving you some little information, some knowledge as far as being a producer? As being a producer, uh, no one. Okay. Um, until I got in the industry, yeah. And then I needed a manager. Yeah. So I hooked up with my boy Serge Duran. Okay. Who currently works with Capitol Records. Yeah. And um. Like, he gave me a lot of game. Mm -hmm. And uh, my lawyer, Vinny Kumar at the time, mm -hmm. he gave me a lot of game too. But I just learned, like, in this industry, it's not an industry where people want to teach you. Yeah. This was the industry where you just got to figure it out on your own. Yeah, get it you know you what I mean? Because at the end of the day, this is how I look at it. Everybody comes into this industry and gets screwed yeah. at some point, right? Mm -hmm. So they figure out how not to get screwed, right? Mm -hmm. So by them figuring out how not to get screwed, that's them protecting their ass okay. at that point that's all they worried about yeah. so they don't care about what you're going through yeah. they if you if you tell somebody that you're going through a situation where you're getting screwed or they won't be like damn that's crazy <laughs> <Hell yeah. laughs> hey you know you got that, that damn that's crazy that's, that's it. <laughs> damn that's crazy you it like that? yeah yeah, they'll hit you with that instead of saying, oh, damn, for real? Or right, so let, let me tell you how you get out of that situation. Or mm -hmm. you, uh, I'm going to tell you how you prevent uh, getting into this situation again and sure. when you do get out of this. You know, yeah. like people, and you know what I'm saying? Like, I done met producers literally, like, they don't even know me for a week. And they, yeah. like, something in me they or something in them that will say, yo, Fuse, can you help me? Uh, I'm going through this. Yeah, and yeah, I was, and I was like, yeah, I got you. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm the person, like, I literally, I wish yeah, somebody, somebody was gave me game. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a lot you of shit that. that I could have avoided. Yeah, for but sure. But nobody gave me game. Man. And I, I respect Southside. Like, when he Southside put me on, I respect him because he didn't baby me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, I'm not saying that, you know, it's not... A benefit of getting baby, you for know, sure. a yeah, person yeah. walking you in, yeah, introducing yeah. Yeah, you, yeah, and yeah. making sure you Put connected. In the right places. Yeah, plugging you everywhere. Like, nah, Southside really just gave me like, threw me in the woods, gave me a knife, and said, "Come back with a fur coat." Yeah, yeah you yeah, know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. that's what he said. Yeah, you know what I mean? So that's what I was like, shit. Yeah. So that's pretty much how my career was, but I appreciated it. In hindsight, going yeah. through it, you're like, yeah. fuck. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, but. Yeah, yeah. When I see other artists or producers going through what they going through, if I can help them, I'm gonna just, I'm well, see, gonna give them game. And they go back to your, like I said, your point guard and quarterback days. Yeah, because I, like I, I tell that. my kids, because I coach basketball, a lot of times, man, life and sports is hand in hand. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? If you're a good team player, you know what I'm saying on the on the on the court, you at, you at where the crib. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So a lot of times, I be telling my kids all the time, like, listen, man, if you you got fucked up attitude, that's how it's gonna be. Absolutely. And you used to feeding people, so you like, I wanted to feed, but I wish I could have, you know, got fed some dollars my damn self yeah. when I was coming up. And then, you know, um, this this those times in my career where I've, you know, changed people's lives and it was almost like, all right, cool, thanks. And yeah. then that's it. They turn yeah. their back on me. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I was like, damn. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But that's a living and you learn lesson thing too. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So I had to, I just had to go through what I had to. I'm not, I don't complain about my path. Yeah. Like I say, you know, when you're going through it, you, you kind of confused because you're not understanding it, yeah. but once you get past it and you can look back at it, yeah. you're like, oh, all right, yeah, yeah, it yeah, makes man, sense. That's fucked up. Yeah, you help somebody out and they just, that's like, you, I ain't help plenty of chicks out like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you looking good because of me, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> I'll put you in that situation. Yeah, yeah it happens like that. Yeah. For now, real. talk about, uh, man, do you do you remember your first beat you, uh, you made some bread off of? The first beat I made bread off of was the first beat I ever made. Oh, damn. Yeah, so my boy Zay, shout out to Zay. Yeah. Um, he used to have a studio and he always made beats. He was a rapper turned producer, and I used to admire him as a rapper. And yeah. I, you know, as he took that transition into producing, I admired that as well. Yeah. I wanted him to teach me, but he would never teach me. Yeah. So I would just have to be over his shoulder. Okay. You know what I'm saying at all times. So I just remember he had a laptop. And he had a studio session one day with these artists, mm -hmm. and he was on the big computer, so his laptop was free. So I was just like, yo, can I use your laptop? I'm going to go sit in the corner right here with yeah. the headphones. He said, go ahead. 
I made a beat. So I guess I had the headphones so loud yeah. that the artist that was that was there, yeah. they heard it. Yeah. And I just remember like the dude kept getting closer and closer <laughs> to the point where he just tapping me on my arm and he's like, yo, you made that right now? Mm -hmm. And I was just like, yeah, yeah, I just made it. He said, yo, can I hear it? And I handed him the headphones yeah. and he was like, yo, this is crazy. He was like, yo, how much? <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm yeah. like, Shh. Shit. I don't even know. I'm yeah. like fifty dollars. Yeah. yeah, literally, yeah. he's like fifty dollars. Like he gave me that look. He like, like, what? Nigga, you're like, like, yeah. but I, I'm looking at it like shit. That's fifty dollars yeah. more than what I had. Like, yeah. I ain't have shit. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, and that right there made me be like, so you mean to tell me I could get fifty dollars every time <laughs> I do this? Yeah. So that was my mentality. You know, like literally, like. Yeah. So it just turned into, um, you know, a lot of rappers found out that I was making beats in the neighborhood, and they would just try to like kidnap me, like, "Yo, come yeah. to the crib, yeah. come make beats for me." And that's what I was just doing, like on my free time, just working with artists that mm. was local. Yeah. And that was pretty much my practice. For sure. Yep. Yep. And that was it, really. Mean. Now tell me this, like, uh, what what was that moment, man, when you was like, "Damn, I'm the shit," like. I did like I'm I, you, you start you feeling yourself like hey this I'm, I'm the man of this shit like I I can do this for real when I was doing beat battles okay I used to do beat battles in New York mm -hmm. um when I was first starting and um you know I, I can't lie like you know a beat battle uh, there's no different from a boxing match mm -hmm. no different from any type of competition you're gonna be nervous yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean not knowing what you're walking into mm -hmm. you I was very inexperienced and like these, there were some people that I know of that were making beats for years yeah. and I was going up against and I just knew that I had a certain type of beats okay. and I felt like they were beat battle yeah. compatible so yeah, yeah, yeah. my first beat battle I won that one and I was just like hmm yeah, I yeah, won yeah. to something yeah, you know what I mean sure, yeah. then came to the next one and then the next one yeah. I'm just winning all of them yeah, and I'm just like yeah, yeah. I'm the shit yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you know what I mean yeah, but sure. I had to humble myself I'm like I'm the shit, but I don't got not one motherfucking song on the radio. Yeah, I don't yeah. got not one plaque. I don't got nobody knows me. Yeah, yeah. So now it's time to do something else. So yeah, it was just like if I'm gonna do this, yeah, let's do let's do this. Yeah. So it just I ain't know how it was gonna pan out, but it just panned out. Mm -hmm. You know, the now, stars aligned. Now speaking of beat battles, man, was, you was down here in Detroit. You was a, a guest a judge for the beat battle yesterday. Um, yeah. How did that go, man? That like, was awesome. When I think of a battle, I always think about battle rap. Like so, as a beat battle, like. Was you go, I go, and then they pick a winner? Yeah, honestly, why I like this beat battle the most, out mm -hmm. of, I mean, not to say that because I'm here and my man's is here, you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. out of every beat <laughs> battle I've ever been to, uh -huh. this was my favorite. And, it, and the reason why it was my favorite because most beat battles, there's like 30 producers. Yeah. So you really have to wait. Yeah, if like, you're damn. competing, yeah. you have to wait your turn. And if yeah. you're judging, take you have to sit through all of and that. And then you kind of forgot how... Uh, player one yeah, like, yeah you know what I mean so it's just like shit yeah. so many this one was so intimate because it was just two producers yeah you know what I mean because I think we started a little bit later than we were scheduled mm -hmm. and um like these two producers that he knew of that was real dope and that they really wanted to compete Dave and uh Churro 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 Tr and Dave Churro oh, yeah shout, shout out to Churro and Dave yeah, yeah New yeah. Wave Dave they both fire okay but like I said I like that because it was like they, the way they did it, it was different because, you know, when you go to a beat battle, you already have your lineup of beats. You know what's going to go first. You know yeah. what's going to go second, third, and it's already there. The DJ just plays it. Yeah, yeah. It was more like he played a beat, then he would be like, oh, word, that's what yeah. you coming with? Yeah, yeah. Hold on. He walks over to the DJ, yeah. and he's like, nah, play this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then he sure. goes, he plays, and the other dude's like, oh, word, this is what we... All right, so then he walks like a versus battle, damn it. Yeah, like but they literally walk into the DJ like, nah, we're not going to play that. We're going to play this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they going back and forth throwing some punches, and I'm like, jeez. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I that's why I liked it, but uh, New Wave Dave, he won. Okay. And like he's fire. Like, yeah. Shout out to him. So. Yeah, that's what's up. Now, do you guys still be recruiting for people for 808 Mafia? Oh, like, if I was a, a, a producer, like, hey, man, listen to this work, man. Like, <laughs> you know, so I'd say so. Or do it take that? Like, Y'all got to find the person. We are all established producers in 808 Mafia. Mm -hmm. All of us are multi platinum producers at mm -hmm. this point of our careers. Mm -hmm. So we all have our own sub companies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if TM finds a producer, and he brings them on board, he signs them to his company, okay. but you're still under the 808 Mafia yeah, it's umbrella. Off, kinda like, yeah, it's just yeah, a yeah. branch under 808 Mafia. As for actual 808 Mafia members, mm -hmm. 
you gotta kind of be spectacular. <laughs> Not yeah, to say yeah, that yeah. I came in and I was spectacular, <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but at like, this point, that's just like the bar is so high. Yeah. We just be like, this is y'all. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, for sure. Yo, you really gotta come with some shit to yeah. make all of us be like, yeah. yeah you yeah, know yeah. what I mean? But usually, when we find talent, we like to look at the new talent as our own personal secret mm -hmm. sauce. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, for sure. we just try to sign them yeah. individually. Now, uh, speaking of your own, are you still working with uh, Young Butter? Oh, shout out to Young like, yeah, Butter. From Damn, Ohio. hell yeah. I just spoke to Butter like yeah, yeah, two yeah. days ago. I, uh, yeah, because I, I peeped. He was on, I remember he was on Sway. Yeah. Uh, um, rapping on Sway and stuff like that. He got a couple of songs. Uh, he, um, I forgot his latest joint, but it was, it was pretty dope. Like, how did, how did that... Uh, how did that um, relationship come about? Uh, and that's somebody like y'all. Y'all still working together? Oh yeah, absolutely. To this very day. So um, he was originally signed to, or I don't, I don't know if he was signed, but I know he was like really like linked in with Adrian Broner. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Cause he from Ohio too. Yeah, yeah. So Adrian Broner was like you know trying to do the music thing at one point. Yeah. And um, there was a song that Young Thug had put out that uh, Adrian Broner put together. Mm -hmm. He put, actually put the song together, but yeah. Young Thug put it on his album, okay. and it was a song that featured Young Butter. Okay. And I'll be honest with you, when I, as soon as I heard it, first time I heard it, and then as soon as I heard it, yeah. I was like, who's this guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you know yeah. what I'm saying? Literally, like, no questions asked. It was, who is this guy? Yeah. And then I did my, my homework, mm -hmm. did some more research on him, and then I saw that he was really locked in with Adrian. So, yeah. you know, I just, you know, watched from afar. But um, I guess they decided to part with biz ways business wise, okay. and then you know he reached out because mm. we was already talking, and yeah. then he was just like, "Yo, you know, I want to fuck with you," and I was like, "Yeah, I'm, I want to fuck with you." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we just started just creating the catalog. You okay. know, we have a lot of songs. Yeah. You know what I mean, right now. But is he in the works with any, any projects or anything? Uh, honestly, I was just talking to him the other day because uh, I. I have, you know, not only do I have my own label, mm. I have my own management company as well. Okay. And I know that he could use a manager at this yeah, current yeah, yeah. time, so I was just setting him up with my management team. Okay. So that's pretty much one of our new clients that we're going to be bringing on okay, board for, for sure. the uh, 2021. That's what's up. But I always yeah. had the relationship with him as a producer. Yeah. But now it's on yeah. management, and then we see how further we could go with it. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, how uh, is it? Is it tough, man? Like when you're trying to, even though you got you established, you got a name out here. Is it hard to break a new artist like in, in, in today's climate because you got so many people? Every day is a new rapper on, on yeah. social media. Every day is somebody trying to rap or, you know, just, hey, I'm a rapper today. Is it hard breaking an artist knowing there's a thousand others that's in your on your block that's trying to rap too? It's just different now. You know, I tell people this because people really don't understand it and they really have to understand this. Mm. Music changes every day yeah every day oh, yeah. which Fast. means the music industry changes every day mm -hmm. what applied yesterday might not apply today yep, yep. we're in a world where it's not about talent shows and stuff like that it's yeah. tiktok yeah yeah <laughs> yeah exactly that's the talent show now you know what i'm saying tiktok mm -hmm. you get a song that's popular on tiktok now people are checking for you yep, yep. then they're going to go to your Social media, all right. So you have an Instagram. What's your following like? Yeah, yeah for you sure. know what I mean. Yeah. So because they, they they looking at following as what's going to equate to streams, dollar, yeah, dollar yeah, yeah. signs. At the end of the day, because at the end of the day, if you got big following. It kind of like they don't have to do as much. They don't want to do nothing. Yeah, they, <laughs> but push a button. Yep. You know what I mean? And that's it. Like so, yeah. The, you, they just really want people that already got everything going for themselves already, and mm -hmm. they just want to be able to add their name to that. Mm -hmm. And boost it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? That's it, really. Do you, you know now, I mean? do you got any advice? Like, we were talking about this. Uh, shout out to my uh, boy, Son of Rose. He was on here. We was just talking about, like, how is the popularity contest and stuff as far as, like, you could be a dope artist, but you could have, like, 1,200 followers. Yeah. So nobody ain't watching for you. Exactly. Is it? Do you got any advice, like, to get your name out there a little bit more as an artist and you know you dope, but you might not have that following, you might not have that right person that ain't heard you? Like, what would you tell a new artist to do, like, to get their name and get a little buzz for themselves? I say there's a formula and then follow the formula. Mm. If the formula is TikTok right yeah. now, well, yeah. go to follow that. So, do I got, so should I make a song to make my people dance to this or? Nah, not even. Just make a good song. Yeah. Put it on TikTok, you know what I mean? And if it's a good song and it's if people. Gonna go. It's going to go. Yeah. What's, what's meant to be is going to be. Gonna be. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah <laughs> I yep, tell yep. people this all the time, <laughs> man. A lot of people want that race to speed up. They can't. They don't want to go through them it's, laps. It's, it's not your time. You know what I'm saying? It's never your time. It's always God's time. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I just feel like what's going to be is going to be. Yeah. Like, if your song is meant to blow up, it's going to blow up. Oh, yeah, but sure. that means 
you still have to do the things that need to be done for it to blow up. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. if it needs to be on TikTok, put it on TikTok. If you need some Instagram videos, yeah. put it on Instagram. Yeah, if you need sure. YouTube, put it on <laughs> YouTube. Yeah. Like, yeah. these things exist for a reason. Yeah. Yeah. Why? These are tools that you can literally use from your phone. Yeah, Why yeah. Wouldn't take advantage you? of it. And it's crazy because what people don't understand is the music industry, mm-hmm. once you sign that dotted line, like, Unless you have a clause in there that says you keep all certain certain type of control, mm-hmm. you lose all that control. You yeah. can't even drop a song if you, if the label don't want you to drop oh, yeah, a song. Yeah, yeah. Can't drop an album if the label don't want you to drop an yeah. album. You have the ability to do everything yourself. You yeah. have all accountability. Okay. Yep, yep. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, they, and we're giving you free apps yeah. that you <laughs> can sure. yeah, to promote there, your shit. Take advantage of it. Why wouldn't you take yeah. advantage of that? Yeah, you got so to, there's man. really no excuse. Oh, no, it's not. It's not. Like I said, you just gotta keep pushing, keep getting on people's nerves with that shit, inboxing. Even with this podcast, I'm sending I'm sending my podcast links to ten people every couple hours. Yeah, just as you to, should. You know what I'm saying? Just to keep it pushing, keep it moving. Uh, hopefully one day we'll get a deal on this, you know? <laughs> Listen, no hopefully. I oh, don't yeah, live we, by we, that we, word. We got, yeah, speaking to existence. I yeah, don't speak, I don't sure. I don't use that word hope. Oh yeah, but when we do, you know what I'm yeah, saying? There we go. <laughs> yeah. When now we... let me ask you this real quick because I'm always always wanna know the answer to this. I kinda know the answer, but I be wanting to hear it. Um, I had a producer on last time, and I was talking about YouTube type beats. You're a producer, yeah. So say I'm I'm such and such. I'm an artist coming into the game, but I might not have the money to be able to afford the beats that I want. But I know I'm dope, and I want to give people music. But I go on YouTube, go on a, a, a J Cole type beat, and I find those beats, and I make a whole project. Is that a bad thing to get my name out there, or should I just wait and, and build my money up and get me a nice beat? All right, it's better to own the the music. So my advice is if you find a beat that is a YouTube beat, mm-hmm. uh, whatever type beat, mm-hmm. there's usually the producer's information in the description. Mm-hmm. So I used to be opposed to type beats only because I just didn't like the fact that they're using my name. Yeah, a few type beat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's just like your type beat. Yeah, you yeah, you, yeah, you sure. made yeah. this beat. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? You don't have to put my name on it. Yeah. So, but... There are producers out there who use that, you know, tight beats. And I currently just discovered a producer, shout out to Adrian, that I definitely got rocking with my team now because I was looking for, I mean, I actually discovered him through a a TikTok video that went viral on Instagram. Okay. And when I found that, I was curious about the song Mm -hmm. and I found out that the song wasn't the original song that was in the video, it was a remix. Okay. And the only way you could find that remix was on YouTube. Yeah. So I went to YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I was just kept yeah. doing research, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. where is this beat from? And then I found the remix, and then it said remix produced by Adrian. And then it had his information, and I reached mm. out to him about that particular beat. Like, yo, this beat is dope. Yeah. And, of course, he was, you know, astounded that I would reach out yeah, to him. Sure. You yeah, know yeah, what I mean? Have, so, oh, shit. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know what I mean? Like I say, I'll reach out if you're dope. And, yeah. like... His beats would be like labeled Playboy Cardi type beats, uh-huh. you know what I mean? And I would listen to him. And he would have like legit Playboy Cardi remixes, yeah. like the acapella with his beat on it. And I'm like, that's creative, that's dope. Yeah. And inspire. He's yeah. getting hella views. I'm like, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So I'm not opposed to that. And I just like I said, if you're gonna use YouTube type or uh, YouTube beats and type beats, mm-hmm. um, just reach out to the producers, see yeah. if you can work something out with them. For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You okay. know what I mean? Because yeah. I mean, producers. This is their intellectual property at the end of the day. And f- for them to find out that you put out an album or music or a single and, then, and, then and you're them. actually generating money off yeah. of it and they're not included, yeah. they're like, you know, it's kind of bad business. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Now, now, man, uh, last year, man, 2020 June, you really, you uh, you did a collab project with one of my favorite rappers. I feel like he underrated his heels, Currency. Currency, With yes. uh, Spring Clean. Yes. Like, how did that come about, man, working with him and, and just doing a whole full-length project with him? Uh, He's dope, so... I mean, I love Currency, man. Ever since... I remember he was on track number 10 of the Carter 2. Yes. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, dog, Currency. Like, dog, Currency is that dude. I think a lot of people remember Currency from the Lil Wayne days. Yeah, you know yo, Young saying? Money. So, he was the original Young Money. Yes. Yeah. Um, I feel Currency is definitely underrated. Very sure, talented. Facts. Very versatile. Mm-hmm. And um, I just kind of wanted to give him something a little bit different. Yeah. I know, like, um, he has a sound. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, his and own I, unique sound, too. His like, own unique sound. Yeah. So what I wanted to do was take his sound and kind of infuse it with mine, but make something special. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, if you listen to the beats, they're not, like the average beat you would hear from me yeah. and it's not the average beat you would hear him rap on mm-hmm. so it's kind of like 
out of the pocket for both of us. Yeah. But that was the marriage of it. I yeah. was just sending him shit that I was like, I want to hear him on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I want to yeah. hear him on this. You for know sure, what I mean? Yeah. I wish we was able to be in the studio together, but Yeah, but that was the whole COVID. I was going to ask you. That yeah. was like right in the beginning of it. Everybody was but, nervous. But we actually started that project like maybe a year and a half prior to COVID, okay. but it wasn't like in the in the midst of trying to be a project. It was just me sending him beats, yeah, 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 and yeah. then you know he'll send me some songs back, and I'm like, oh okay, dope. Yeah. And before I knew it, I'm like, oh damn, you got these many songs, yeah. you know what I mean? But I just kept sending, and, and then it was like, I think it was like the night before the album. Mm -hmm. Uh, Musa, his uh, manager sent me the uh, final, yeah. and I was like, "Oh, okay, good selection." You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, I was yeah. I was happy with the selection, but I just wanted to tweak like a couple yeah. things, and I was just happy he sent it to me because if I wasn't able to tweak those yeah. things, oh my god, <laughs> I would have been so disappointed hey, in that album. Like, cause I'm, I critique myself, yeah, for sure, way more than an average person would. Is it, do you do it a little bit too too much to the point that? You might not release something as soon as you want to because you just like, this could be better, that could be better. So I'm going through that right now with my artist. So yeah. I have an artist named Eastico, shout out to Eastico, and he has a single, and we recorded the single at a studio, but I think this, the computer might have crashed after we recorded the single okay. or whatever, and it was the literally the perfect version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And even though we had the MP3 of it, we no longer had the session of it. Okay. So we couldn't get it mixed and mastered properly. Mm -hmm. So it was very like disappointing to know that, but then it's like, damn, we have to re-record this song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like. That can be tough because you got to relive that moment. That's you the know what part. Yeah. You know, and, and you know what's crazy? As, like I said, I used to rap. Yeah. So I do understand sometimes it's hard to match. Yeah, because you had a different type of energy back then. We, <laughs> your mind state could have been yeah, different. Yeah, your voice yeah. was different. Yeah. Everything was different. And he tried to re-record the song a couple times, and I would just be like, nope, that ain't it. Nope, <laughs> now both of y'all frustrated. It. To this, <laughs> yes. Right now, current at this moment, he's probably at his house frustrated, and yeah. I'm right here doing this interview, still frustrated. Yeah. Like, damn, man, so, damn, that's messed up. But, but I know we're gonna get it. I yeah. know because every time we do it, we get a little bit closer. Yeah, for sure. So I just feel like yeah. you know, just keep keep going. We're gonna get yeah. it there. Yeah, but now, I'm a perfectionist. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes it, it could be to a, it could be good and bad thing at the same time. Yes, you know what I'm saying. Yes. Now with that currency project, man, like um. How quick was it? Cause it seemed like he a quick artist, like cause he dropped mixtapes like damn near every every three months. It seemed like yeah, like is it, was it like real fast or you say y'all kind of like you no, nah, it took time. Beats? It took time. Like I said, like if I had to say for all the songs to come together, it took at least two years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? But during the crunch time part of it, it was, was like during quick. COVID. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So. You know, especially during that time, that's when I wanted to come in. I like to come in like in the ending stages mm -hmm. of something and then do the cleanup. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, so that's what I was. Straight. But, you know, like, you know, he wanted to keep his family safe yeah. and I wanted to stay away. Oh, was, yeah, you know, especially around that time we were yeah, just starting. Know, yeah, yeah, we everybody. didn't know what to think. Yeah, so. man, that was scary times. I was in <laughs> I thought I had COVID like five times mm -hmm. within the first couple months. Like, I'm drinking black tea. Uh, but, <laughs> listen, <laughs> I've been there with you. I'm just here doing the, the whole You just can't even cough around anybody. Man, a comment cough, you like, you trying to hold, you about to die. Like, <laughs> I remember I was on the plane, damn near about to die because I didn't want to cough. I'm like, <laughs> man, right, you on, just got cold. You ain't trying to, man. Like 40 minutes left. <laughs> <Hell yeah. laughs> now, do you remember a track list to that album? Because I usually do top three on on projects and stuff that yeah. people are involved in. Do you mm -hmm. remember a track list to that? Yeah. And so, would you have a top three? Mine's would be uh, Roll the Riches uh, mm -hmm. featuring Wiz, yeah. Coast to Coast. Yeah. And the hardest one to me is that Black Mirror. Black Mirror. Everybody loves Black, Black Mirror. Black Mirror hard, man. It's like something Rick Ross would got on, too. Yeah, I want to be. It's funny. We made that beat for Rick Ross. Yeah, see, man, come on, man. Bring me on the team, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, damn, that's crazy. So, <laughs> out of those three, I'll, take, I'll say two. Yeah. Road to Riches and Coast to Coast. Coast Road Coast, to he Riches, going, he was for going sure. Coast Coast. Road to Riches is funny to me because. He didn't even know if I made the beat. Yeah. He texted me the song. Yeah. No, he texted me the beat. He yeah. said, you made this beat? Yeah. yeah and I said, yeah. yeah. And then he said, yes. <laughs> and then yeah. he, sent, he sent me the song right after that. And I yeah. was like, he said, listen to this. Yeah. And then I heard the Wiz verse. And I was like, ooh. Oh, yeah, hell yeah. Gotcha. You know what I mean? So, yeah, because Wiz, he gave you old Wiz. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah, I mean? yeah. That was that uh, Christian Orange. Yeah, yeah, he gave you old Wiz. Yeah. And uh, I'll say the other song is A Sleeper. Yeah. It's the one with Gunplay. Oh, and see, yeah, because I, I like that one, too. Because Gunplay, I don't, man, he don't. 
Gunplay be dropping some shit though, yeah. man. Like uh, I, I, I forgot which album that was with Rick Ross, but he might have the best verse on the album. Yeah, no, like, as far like, as against the parents, could rap. That's yeah. the thing. A lot of people be sleeping. Like yeah. he could really rap. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. But. He just he, his antics outshine his rapping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> so yeah, that's man. what people will always remember him for. for his sure, antics. Yeah, that Black Mirror man was hard, man. Yeah. Like I'm like, yeah, see the currency, man. Come on, show me. I know about you, dog. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's with uh Dame Dash right after Young Money and stuff. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, we got another one coming out soon. Okay. Um, a follow up. Uh, see, he, I I wanted to be. A spring clean too, yeah. but he didn't want it to be a spring clean too. So yeah, 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 yeah. the uh, the next one is called Motion Picture. Okay, that's the next one. Okay, um, okay. I don't. We don't have a date exactly, but we have a lot of songs yeah. already. So. Now, man, what messed me up, man? Because when I, I knew he was gonna come on the show, man, I, I, I usually go back and do a little uh, digging and searching and stuff like that. And you was talking about like how he had hit you up, like, did you do this beat? Like, you know, what I'm saying, hoping that you did it. Yeah. I did not know that you had did that big shine beat, the, the move. Yeah. Like that was like that shit. That's the that's the workout song right there. That's like, my life changing. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. I got the moves. I got the moves. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I was gonna ask you because I I know you did that. You did uh pen to a cross by Rick Ross. Yeah. You did uh the money bad yo uh mm -hmm. commotions like so that's the one that sticks out the the most is that Big Sean move. Yeah, I mean that was my life changer. Yeah. One of my favorites. He, uh, I did. Damn, what's the name of that song? I did a Royce Pop Nine song on his album. Okay, um, shout out Royce. Um, that reason why I like that song mm -hmm. out of my catalog is because I was a Royce fan. Yeah. You know what I mean? Growing up, just, you know, Eminem. To me, he another one, underrated. Underrated as fuck. Man. But, you know, to, to hear him, to hear a Royce Five Nine album and then a song come on and then it starts with Eight Oh Eight Mafia. Yeah, yeah, I was like, yeah, 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 yeah for sure. We changing the game. Hell so, yeah. um, but Big Sean was my life changer. That was the biggest song that you know when it came out. I just knew like, all right, what am I about to buy? Yeah, you know? <laughs> Hell yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah, it was right, like, no. I just knew the money was about to start coming <laughs> after that. Heck yeah, man. Now, uh, man, with up and coming artists, man, and producers, like with. Up becoming anything that you do, you hungry because you hungry to get, you know what I'm saying, to get established. You hungry to, to be known and, you know what I'm saying, to get out there. But what keep your hunger once you is established? Like once everybody know who Fuse is and you with AOA Mafia, what keep that hunger and that motivation once you already, you know what I'm saying, established? Um, man, I'm just, it's just my nature. Yeah. I'm just always like that. Yeah, I yeah, have yeah. a hunger for more. That's why I be out like... I be telling people like a lot of people ask me all about how did I feel after I got my first plaque or my first taste of success. Like yeah, in the moment you're like yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. but once you go to sleep and wake up, right, for me yeah, it's yeah. like all right, what now? Yeah, for sure. What's next? Repeat it. Yeah, 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 you know yeah. what I'm saying. Like, that's the thing about with me and goals. Uh, I find myself always having to create new ones. Yeah. Because once I reach whatever goal I I plan it for myself, it's really like all right, what now? Yeah. It's almost like imagine. Look, you're at the bottom of of, of a mountain, right? It's, mm. It could be the tallest mountain, and you're just like, I gotta make it to the top. Yeah. Imagine you make it to the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You standing on the top, <laughs> yeah. looking at the ed off the edge. You see the view. You've been up there for like 20 minutes now. Yeah, now you ready to go back down? <laughs> what, what now? <laughs> yeah. What What's next? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, can I get to the clouds? You yeah, know what I yeah, mean? Like, yeah, yeah. let's see if we can get to the clouds now. You know what I'm <laughs> yeah, saying? Like, for sure. Yeah. So it's just like that's how it is. Yeah. For me, it's just like I right, once I get to the cloud, I right, let's see if I can get to space. Yeah, yeah. Let's see we can take this to another planet. Man. <laughs> yeah. I heard about the black hole. It's, it's going there. Like, sure. mm -hmm. So that's just me. I just limitless. Yeah. Now I'm always interested in knowing, like, as a producer, like you know, as an artist, when you're in the studio, you need certain things. Some artists need, you know, saying the smokes, the drinks, you know, saying chicks. Mm -hmm. Be by yourself. As a producer, what do you need to have like a, a good studio session for yourself, like in creating? Two. There's two sessions. Mm -hmm. It depends on my mood. Yeah. If I'm just trying to be locked in. And I'm not trying to like be bothered. I have to be in there by myself, mm. just locked in. Yeah. Maybe one other person, but that other person can't be, can't do music. Okay. They just have to be a listening yeah, ear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. Uh, the other side of it is, I want to actually have fun. So sure. I would want my boys there. Yeah. I want that energy. Girls Hype bring. You up or whatever. Yeah, bring yeah, the yeah. the girls have to be there for this type of session because when you make the beat. You want to see if a girl gets up and starts dancing. So chicks definitely had to be at, the, at when you made the move. Oh uh, no! It seemed like uh, it was just some chicks there. Just a whole nah, bunch of man. When we made moves, it was me, and my boy Trey Pounds, and I just remember we was just really inspired. 
yeah. by like a lot of music that was coming out. Okay. And I just remember we just had the battery in our back. Yeah. And we were just like, man, let's just go. To, cause we lived together at the time. Okay. And we were just like, man, let's just go make some beats. Yeah. And I just remember we was just like every hour on the hour just yeah. creating it. And that was just one of the beats that was in, yeah. uh, in that time period. And... It just turned out did you, to be. Did you know off the rip like this? A, this a big shine song or? No, it was actually a beat that we did, and I gave that beat to Sean Garrett. Okay. And Sean Garrett wrote a song for Missy, and Missy was supposed to use it. Oh damn! Hey, that's, a, well, hey, that's then, something y'all ain't know, man. That's and true. then that's Southside true. got the beat. Yeah. He loved the beat, and he put out a song called "Winning Three. Yeah. He actually released the song. Okay, recorded. Over. Okay. And so. I didn't know, honestly, I mean, just speaking, like, uh, being honest, I didn't know that many people heard Southside song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, even Big Sean heard it, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> So, like... it's kind of crazy. <laughs> so, I just know that um, when the Big Sean song came out, I would post it. Yeah. Anytime I would post the song, there would always be some people in the <laughs> comments like, Southside song was better. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or you gave away Southside's beat. Or that's the same beat Southside used. And I just be like, damn, like, how many people heard this <laughs> yeah, song? Yeah, for sure, yeah. But, you know, it was all love. Southside, you know, he still supported the yeah. Big Sean shit. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Now, man, we all passionate about things that we in, man. When If it's sports, if it's music, if it's producing, whatever, we all passionate about things and we love it to, you know what I'm saying, we love it to death because you get paid for something that you love doing. Yeah, absolutely. You know? So, but but with, with that, there's always things that you may hate that you got to deal with. So what's one thing that you hate that you have to deal with on this side of business, being a producer or a manager or having your own label? What's something that, that you like, damn, I wish I had to go through this when doing this? All right, so I wear different hats. Okay. As a producer, I think... What I hate you saying, what yeah. I dislike... Yeah, what, I, what, I wouldn't what you, say hate. Hate is a yeah, strong what you word. Dislike that you had I to dislike... Tolerate. Um, the waiting game. Okay. It's a waiting game where, you know, especially like when labels have to pay you, they yeah. pay you when they're ready to pay you. For sure, yeah. I mean, yeah, you got have a lawyer that's on their ass and, mm -hmm. you know, yo, where that money at? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, Every yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. But it's still like, we'll pay you when... Yeah. It's never like a transaction when you're like buying a sneaker at Full Locker. Here's yeah. the yeah, money. Yeah, here's the, here's yeah. the item. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, never yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, that part sucks. Um, and just not knowing what's next okay. as a producer because you know, yeah. you really it's about placements, yeah, for sure. So, if you're not tapped in with artists, or if you're not connected with artists, mm -hmm. before you know it, a whole year gonna go by, then mm -hmm. another year is gonna go by. So, how, how are you paying your bills? Yeah, yeah, Isn't, this is not one of those careers where you could just sell one beat and just live all forever, yeah, nah. yeah. unless you <laughs> unless you sell. Unless you that one beat is the biggest song in life, yeah, exactly, and yeah. you're just getting unlimited yeah. royalties, you <laughs> yep, know what yep. I mean? Like, yeah, then that's different. But well, uh, damn, now this is just me. This could be a crazy question or whatever, but I just just thought about this out the blue. Mm -hmm. When well, you said placement, is would you rather have a placement on maybe TV or a movie than with an actual artist? Because if like say for instance, like I'm just thinking about Good Times. Yeah. That song, Good Times, like you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, is it a difference in in money being made on something that's always on always coming on it's all about how it's structured yeah. and uh some people will do it where they're like uh, they want to own the master of the whatever's made yeah. and so they might i don't know you know it's all negotiated differently mm -hmm. you know with these sinks yeah. sometimes they'll just give you an upfront okay and they'll just run it yeah, you yeah, know yeah. what i mean and they will just recoup off of their upfront okay. you know what i'm saying but it just depends, you know. Like I've heard of people who didn't get upfronts, mm -hmm. and like every time it's played, mm -hmm. they get a royalty of you know of it being played. Yeah, I think you still get royalties, but a lot of people give give up. They forfeit that when they take upfronts. Yeah. You know upfront what I'm saying? Instead so, of having it, yeah, so you get it whenever it come on. Yeah, I, exactly. If it gets syndicated. Yeah, so like you got to think like imagine. Martin, I, I forgot. Like I know Kid Capri made the beat for yeah, Martin, yeah, right? Yeah. And I know he's made a lot of money off of it. So okay. clearly, to my knowledge, I don't know his actual contract, but it seems as if he owned the master of that. Mm -hmm. So even to this day, no matter when yeah, Martin is played, he get paid for it. He's getting paid yeah. for it. So you got to think Martin will be played twenty years <laughs> yeah, from now. Yeah, for sure. Still. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? So that's yeah. different. You know what I mean? Like, like you said, with Good Time, Sanford Son, these things are being played, and I'm. 35 and they've been on shit when my dad was you know what I'm saying? so you, you gotta think but you gotta think if 
if you never really had money, right? And he, he somebody to, yep. saying like, yo, I'll give you 10 grand for this song. Right now, yeah. Right now. You know what I mean? Some people are like, damn, 10 grand? Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. But they don't know 10 grand is really like, like $10. To, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? About so, turn to 10 million. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just like, shit, I'll take that 10 grand, but yeah. they don't know that I, in return, that this person is really going to be making hundreds of thousands. Yeah, for sure, yeah. In the long run. Ever, that, yeah. That's the thing. It's like an investor. Yep. They see the long run. They see yeah. the ending. Yeah. We look at and a lot now. of people look at yeah, the right now. Because like you said, you ain't seen that money. Bills is due right now. Mm-hmm. That's what that's <laughs> that's the whole stock market is yep. built off of long term. Yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. This, you're not really gonna have that flip overnight. Yeah. You're not gonna invest in a company today and then you wake up tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're a millionaire. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's the long. I mean, it could happen, yeah, but yeah. I'm just saying like that's yeah. less than likely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Now we wind it down, man. We get to the end, man. But I, I have a random question. I be want to ask. I always ask like random questions at times, man. Is this something in life, man, that, that that scares you, man? Like for example, with me, I mean, I know you shouldn't speak this. You, you don't speak things, or you don't try to, you know, what I'm saying talk things that might happen. But I'm always yeah. afraid that I might lead this earth to early in my kids. You know, what I'm saying still young kids. Yeah. So I'm afraid. I got my, that's a fear of mine is, is leaving while my kids is young. Yeah. So you know, what I'm saying because you don't know if you insult them with enough game to be able to carry on without you. Yeah. So what's something that you know, what I'm saying a fear of yours that you you know, what I'm saying you may you may deal with or you know, what I'm saying it is in the back of your mind. Uh, you know, what I'm saying often. Um. I if got, it's anything. I got a couple of them. <laughs> uh, but I was, I don't know. I mean, we're, we're gonna say life related. Mm-hmm. Just general life Mm -hmm. i would just say um i know that we all have fears right Yeah, for sure if you know anything about fears as long as you hold on to them you're eventually gonna have to face it yeah yeah you feel what i'm saying so i look at it like i try to conquer them before yeah it could happen I, it could happen yeah. you know a lot of fears that i've had i've encountered them and mm-hmm. i made it through mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying but some of them i realized like i i had like i had a fear of height so i yeah. went skydiving yeah, yeah, yeah you know yeah, what i'm saying yeah, yeah. so it was just like all right i grabbed the bull by the horns on that one yeah, yeah, you know sure. what i mean like i remember i was scared of snakes because mm-hmm. my mother she's scared of snakes and yeah. i knew that wasn't my natural fear yeah so i was just like i'm not going to let my mother reflect yeah, on me yeah, where yeah. the snakes at yeah. bring them hey, on man, you know what interview, i mean i gotta show you a picture of me with these snakes in my- <laughs> i was scared <laughs> yeah so yeah. i would be around snakes and then it was like i remember one of my biggest fears this is gonna sound funny as hell was pit bulls yeah hey. i used to be yeah. terrified yeah. of pit bulls yeah. but you would never guess that because th- before you knew it i had 12. <laughs> <laughs> you know what i'm saying like I'm a pit bull you tackle, breeder. You tag that boy for real. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it was just like I just tackled. I, yeah. I remember I was always scared of guns and shootouts, and yeah. I just didn't want to be in the midst of none of that. Yeah, and I just sure. remember my house got shot up. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like it wasn't for me. Yeah. It was it was a house where it was a bunch of roommates. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I just remember that was an experience where it was just like holy <laughs> shit! <laughs> yeah, yeah. For the so, whole yeah. fucking house got shot up, <laughs> yeah. and we're still alive. Damn, holy yeah, shit! Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? God, like, shit. So you know, I mean, I would say. Uh, music wise if yeah. I had a fear uh, it would probably just be not being able to check off all the boxes okay you know what I mean yeah, like yeah. all the goals that I have you for know sure. what I mean I checked off a lot I'm grateful for yeah, where I'm at yeah. very grateful but it's just still more that I want to check off you mm-hmm. know what I mean that okay. now another uh, another random question totally different you know a lot of times you uh a person musical choice could tell tell you a lot about somebody. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? If I give you uh, the ox and you, you know what I'm saying, you put some stuff in like, damn, that nigga, he, he deep. He, you know, you can tell a deep brother from his music, mm-hmm. like a wild boy, whatever like that, you know what I'm saying? Or you can mix it up, be a little deep, a little wild. Yeah. Um, can a chick playlist be a red flag? Because to me, if a chick know word for word every Gucci Man song in 20, t- 2006, mm-hmm. uh, she probably for the streets. <laughs> I'm gonna so, be real with you. Damn, that's a tricky one. I love like Gucci Man is a piece of shit. I personally love being around women with and hearing their musical taste, uh-huh. especially their musical taste because believe it or not, they're great A and R's. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, because you already know there's a lot of music that I did wasn't even up on yeah. that girls put me on to. Yeah. That I'd be like, who's this? Yeah, who's yeah, this? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it might have been on the R and B side yeah, of things, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, but yeah. it's always like, who's this? So I think they have good musical taste. Mm-hmm. Um, but can't be but when it comes to like, knowing the lyrics of ratchet yeah, music yeah, yeah. Like, and fucked up shit, that's the only thing shit, you play. I just feel like 
Not necessarily, because yeah, yeah, yeah. girls are still emotional creatures. For sure. No matter how much they want to be niggas, yeah, 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 you yeah, know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's still softness under that shell, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, so I just feel like that's just an exterior. Yeah. You know what I mean? Girls put on, they love that music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if they fall in love, it's over. It's back to that R&B playlist. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? That yeah. R&B playlist is, is there. <laughs> so believe that. Yeah, because that's funny. We were talking about that stuff. Like, we were talking about, like, how if a girl in her Instagram story is constantly, hey, hey, like, oh, shit. Yeah. I don't want to mess with the A girl. I mean, you know what <laughs> like, it is? Do, <laughs> all right, so be honest with yourself. Do you really care about a girl being for the streets? You talking about once it's time for her to be with me? That's see that, that's <laughs> you see the contradiction. That's why I say that it's a contradiction with all of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If we're that's just that's fucking, yeah. we don't give a we don't fuck. We give a damn. Who she in did something? You with. yeah. I don't care if you just left your man's yeah. house. Yeah. But the minute you're like, I want to pursue her. Yeah. And you're like, you was around what niggas last yeah, night? Yeah, for sure. You was, what, nah, you ain't go to no club. Like yeah. now you you you're trying to remove her from which you met her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? So yeah. it's just like we can't automatically <laughs> just want that change. You know. Yeah, 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 like yeah, that's yeah. girls do the same thing with us. Yeah, for sure. You know they'll fuck with you in the beginning. They, they know, know you got you bitches. Are. Yeah, they know they're not the only one. You just met them. Yeah, you, you know coming I mean? to the crib all the time. Now, yeah, you on yeah. date number five. They know you got yeah. hoes. Yeah, 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 but the yeah. minute you break, you blowing her back out, <laughs> and you got her doing wild shit in the bedroom, <laughs> yeah. she's like, all right, nigga. All right, I love you. Like, yeah, you yeah, all right. What we doing here? Yeah, she was trying every five seconds asking where you at. Exactly, it changes. So now she wants to change you. Yeah. So that's all it is. Relationships at the end of the day is two yeah. people who are Damn. willing to change for each other at the same time. Damn, that's a fact. Yeah, that's real shit. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> nah, for that's real. That's we real. All, that's for when real. you come to, you gotta think. When you're dealing with somebody, you have to change. Yeah, you got to. It's, because it's, it's, it's some shit that's gonna irritate her. It's some it, shit that's you gonna have irritate to you. exactly. So y'all have to find a way to be compatible, and that if you being compatible it all deals with this line of respect and if y'all both respect that that line right there then that's a real relationship nine yeah. times out of ten is not like that yeah. it's usually one-sided one person is more invested than the other you know okay. what i'm saying because yeah, 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 yeah. some you know you might be like y'all really want to be with her but she might be like damn i like him i fuck with him but damn this nigga over here getting money i like him too you know what i mean like it could be all types of influences and the same thing with women i mean okay. you know what i mean like uh, they will be invested and we'll be like, damn, you know, yeah. shorty cool. Okay, okay. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. All right, man. I just, just, we, at the end, man, I always do this, man. Top three. I'll give you a category. Give me your top three. Top three. Yeah. Give me your top three childhood crushes. Top, oh, I, Vanity from The Last Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to go with whew, uh, top three. Uh, Christina Milian. Okay, yeah, yeah. She up there. She was nice. Hell yeah. And I, it's only right. Um, I'm gonna I'm pick one that most people probably wouldn't pick. Rosario Dawson. Okay. Yeah, yeah. She nice. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I used to like her since the movie Kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She yeah. was the wild. I one. remember that. Junk. Yeah, that's, ain't that the one where he had AIDS and yeah, shit? He was, just, he was just passing AIDS yeah. to all the girls. <laughs> hell yeah. Hell she yeah. She was the one that was fucking everybody, but she didn't have AIDS. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> my wife put me on that movie, dog. Yeah, that's Damn, crazy. Dog. My man off of uh, off of Friday too. Uh, um, um, cockroach. Oh, yeah, cockroach. Yeah, he was yeah. he was in there. He yeah. the His name was Casper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, man. Give me your top three. Uh, give me your top three personal influences. Not music, just personal. Like personal, just yeah. in, in life. Yeah, in just general. in life in general. My dad. Um, definitely, I would say Michael Jordan. Okay. And last but not least, I would say Iverson. Okay. And reason, I mean, oh, yeah, they both they both basketball players, but Jordan he, he influenced culture, me though. on the basketball level. Iverson influenced me on the image level. Yeah, like, he the, changed the culture. The cornrows, yeah, the, the tattoos. tattoos yeah, the, you man. Know, I mean, hooping with a do rag, like yeah, because yeah. 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 he won't have people putting on arms. Yeah, the sleeve. Yeah. I still hoop with the sleeve to this yeah. day. Like, yeah, yeah man. Like, it really definitely, definitely, to, uh, Al Iverson, man. All right, give me your top three movies. Juice. Oh, yeah. Uh, shit. Uh, Last Dragon. Okay. Uh, paid in full. Paid in full. Hell yeah, that's the shit right there, man. All right, top three TV shows. Martin, Fresh Prince, and um, Power Rangers. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, that was, I was a Power Ranger. Hey, we used to kid. fight. We used to fight at school. Who's gonna be a Green Ranger or a Red one? Cause <laughs> you wanna to, be motherfucking Billy. Uh, nobody <laughs> wanted to be the, the Black Ranger. Like everybody wanted to be the Red right. Ranger. Last top three, man. Top three uh, moments in life. Top three, uh, Big Sean moves. Okay. Um, getting recruited to college, full scholarship. Yeah, definitely dope. And um, 
I would say buying my first sports car. Okay. Okay. That's what's up. Hell yeah. Good, good, good three. Good three. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now we always end everything off, man. How moment, drunk moment. A funny story when you was one or both. Uh, I'll give you a drunk moment because right. I don't drink. All right. Man, man, uh, so so up, man. Southside had a birthday party at this club in Atlanta and we all showed up and I guess it was a, a both moment because you, you're really not supposed to mix the two yeah. I mean like to be honest unless your tolerance is just crazy mm -hmm. but I just remember that I smoked a couple blunts mm -hmm. uh, during the you know during the party mm -hmm. then all I know is that uh, Southside's girlfriend at the time um, her family was coming through and they was bringing like punch yeah, 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 these yeah. big jars of <laughs> things of punch yeah. so I just remember everybody like yo that punch good that punch good yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying so I'm like let me go get some punch you yeah, know what I mean yeah. so I went over there and I remember she was just like be easy with that punch yeah, you know yeah, what I mean yeah. but I it didn't register and everybody said be easy it's like you go crazy mm -hmm. <laughs> she was like be easy with that punch I, I remember I poured it in my cup I took a sip I, when I say you don't even taste not one drop of liquor that's the worst not one drop. Yeah. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. This shit is juice. Yeah. Go, go, go. Yeah. I'm sitting in the corner and I'm like, that shit was Kool-Aid, nigga. Let me yeah. go get some more. Yeah, like, yeah, it sure. didn't kick in or nothing. I went and got another cup. I think, oh yeah, was, all it took was two cups. Yeah. I was sitting, I just remember there's a step just like you see the step. Yeah. There's another step that's up. I'm on this, I'm on the second one. My boy Queso <laughs> is standing in front of me. Yeah. All I know is that I just started rocking back and forth. Yeah. And I just remember I leaned over, so he's in front of me, but he's facing this way. So I go by his ear, and I'm like, I'm not doing too good. <laughs> and he was just like, yo, what's good? You all right? I said, yo, just stand there. Don't move. Yeah. So I remember I leaned over on him, yeah. and I said, just walk. Yeah. So he's like, where? I said, walk out of here. <laughs> so so I'm, I'm leaning on him. As he's walking out now, at this point, I'm yo. When I say my shirt, my <laughs> pants was stuck to my legs. I was just soaking wet from oh, just. Yeah. I just started sweating out of nowhere, like <laughs> bad, like real bad, yeah. out the sauna bad. Man, damn. so he just walking. He makes it. He uh he makes it to outside. Uh, he's like, yo, what are, you, are you okay? Are you okay? I was like. Yo, just go get the car. Yeah. You know, I'm like out of breath and all of this because I'm just really <laughs> fucked up. Damn. And he's like, all right, just sit right here. So I'm sitting on the bench yeah. when he leaves me. Yeah. When he comes back, I'm laid out on the sidewalk. Duh. Face down. <laughs> Damn. And I close my eyes. Yeah. All I just felt, was, he was just like, yo, get up, get up, Man, get up. Damn. I open my eyes and I'm like, Damn. Duh. I was just like I just I didn't even notice I was on the floor. That's how drunk I was. <laughs> man, and damn. he was just like, damn, bro, why you drink? I was just like, right, yo, it was juice, man. <laughs> they blame me. Yeah, dog. like yo, it was juice, man. man. And he was just like, nah, man, you shouldn't have drank that shit. And he was just helping me up to the car. Yeah. It, we, the thing was, he couldn't even get to the car. He had to hop in. We had to hop in the car with somebody else to drive us to his car. <laughs> so it was just it was just a shit show. God it was just damn, like, yeah. So that was my drunk yeah. moment. That, honestly, that was my last drunk. moment. Moment. I bet. <laughs> yeah. I, oh, it almost happened at the Waka show. Waka had a show like three days ago in Athens, and I went there, and there was a bottle of Tito's, oh, shit, and Tito's. there was God. Sprite. Yeah, yeah. I wanted the Sprite. That's a good mix too. So I poured the Sprite, and I looked at the Tito's, and I was just like, a splash won't hurt. <laughs> Boom, put a splash, and I was just like, oh, a little extra. <laughs> a little Boom, little put extra. it down. Smoking my blunt, like just like usual. Now I'm now I'm sipping though. Yeah. I know it's Sprite and I know it got Tito's in it, but yeah. I'm sipping. Yeah, yeah, for sure. One cup, I'm sipping. Yeah. All I know is that I'm sitting next to my boy J Rock that I co-managed with, and I was just like, Yeah, I gotta put the cup down. <laughs> he was just like, you What do you mean? It? Yeah, he was, I was like, Yeah, it's that time, bro. And I had the blunt in my hand, so I'm thinking I could just still smoke the blunt. Yeah. And I said. Now I gotta put the blunt down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, but well, you know, uh, you learned, you learned. <laughs> nah, huh? yeah. I literally put both of them down, and I was just like, "That's it." And I just remember, like, I was on stage while they were performing, and I'm just like, "I'm so happy I stopped," because yeah, yeah. I started really start. It was still fucking with me while yeah. I was on stage. So I was just <laughs> like, <laughs> I was just like, "I'm so happy I stopped." And then, yeah, yeah. By the time it was time man. to go, I just slept the whole ride home. Yeah. But man, yeah. that was, yeah. I'm glad you came up with a dope story because last. 15 people in total, the wackiest goddamn drunk stories. Like, <laughs> yeah, I drunk, 
I was fucked up. I woke up like you could have told me you just had no story. You know? like, nah. <laughs> I mean, nah. hey man, I appreciate you coming on the show, man. I appreciate man. you having me. Appreciate your time, man. Hey, uh, can you tell people where you can find you at your socials and everything uh, like that? Yes, sir. You can find me on uh, Instagram. Fuse 808 Mafia and it's Fuse with an S. I don't know why some people still be typing yeah, like a Z. Z yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, Fuse makes beats on Twitter uh, and pretty much Fuse 808 Mafia on all other uh, social platforms. Okay, that's, that's what's, up, what's up, man. Yeah, like I said, I appreciate you coming. Oh, yeah, this uh, episode is sponsored by goddamn Duke of Dane. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Whiskey. You mess with that lane. Get you a nigga with some Duke Dane. That. Like a Diddy in the back, man. You know what I'm saying? Shout him out, man. That's but that yeah. real whiskey right there. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure, man. Like I said, hey, man, if it's Kool-Aid, don't drink that shit because it's really liquor. Shout out to everybody, man. Episode 8.